Right now at 6, a Sun Prairie woman mourns her fiancé killed by a wrong way driver on Highway 151. And lawmakers are working to address Wisconsin's growing Lyme disease problems. More on the changes they want to see at state parks. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us. We are learning more about the man who died in a car accident Sunday night. Ryan Schultz was driving home from dinner with his family when he was hit by a car going the wrong direction near the town of Trenton in Dodge County. Our Keely Arthur spoke to his fiance today. Keely? This is a tough one. From planning a wedding to a funeral, that is the reality for one 22-year-old woman in Sun Prairie. Alyssa Van Gorder and Ryan Schultz were engaged to be married next January, but those plans were derailed Sunday night. He was kind. And he was gentle, and he was a really, really good man. Ask Alyssa Van Gorder about her fiance, Ryan Schultz, and like anyone in love, she doesn't have enough good things to say about him. He loved me. He was a really good dog dad and cat dad. Um, he loved his best friends. He would, you call him in the middle of the night and say, hey, I need something, and he'd be there. He was really, really, really special. The two met two Aprils ago. I knew from the second that I opened my door and I saw this cute boy with these big blue eyes standing there staring at me, I just, I knew that there was something about him. And this last December got engaged. I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. But Alyssa's dreams of a future with Ryan fade into a nightmare when she slips back into the reality of what happened Sunday night. Ryan had dinner with his family and was driving back to Sun Prairie on Highway 151 near Trenton when another person driving down the wrong side of the highway and suspected to have been drinking slammed into the 24-year-old, killing him instantly. I think that that person... took everything from me and his family. Alyssa spoke with him one final time before the crash. He had told me that his phone was at like 5% battery, but that he wanted to use that 5% to talk to me. And he said, I love you. And I said, I love you more. And he said, no, I love you more. He told me that he would call me when he got home. And I told him that I loved him one more time. And he said it back. Those words and their memories, all she is left with now and says the only way she'll ever be able to move forward from the tragedy of Sunday is to live a life of love and adventure, exactly as she and Ryan had planned. He told me, you know, things, places that he's always wanted to see. And because of this person's choices, he's, he, he doesn't have that anymore. And I have to, I will do that for him. The driver of the other car, Eric Hagenbart of Beaver Dam, has a history of driving while intoxicated. His status is currently unknown to the public. He was taken to the hospital via life flight for threatening life threatening injuries. If you want to help Alyssa, head to our website. Keely, thank you. A teacher at Spring Harbor Middle School has been removed from the classroom while administrators investigate reports that the teacher used a racial slur in front of students. In a statement to families, the principal said no matter the context or circumstance, the use of racial, racial slurs is unacceptable and that the incident does not represent the safe and inclusive community at the school. This is one of several incidents in the past year where Madison School District employees have used racial slurs. A downtown neighborhood center is asking for community donations for security upgrades after staff found someone had broken in and vandalized the space earlier this week. According to a Facebook post by the center, no permanent damage was done, although this is the first break-in in 50 years. Staff members still want to make changes. We have a link to the center's fundraiser on channel3000.com. To weather now, some sunshine today. Let's see how long it'll stick around and our look at our rain chances with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti, our first alert forecast. Gary? Well, things are pretty quiet right now across about 90% of our viewing area, but far southwestern Wisconsin, seeing a couple of showers and thunderstorms. You can see this invisible cloud track. There's little buildups between La Crosse and Dubuque, Iowa. On uh, Doppler track, you can see some flashes of lightning there. We'll zoom in on that area. Might even be a little stronger thunderstorm with perhaps some small hail right around Mineral Point. Those are drifting toward the south and southwest and pretty much will be out of southern Wisconsin over the next couple of hours. Temperatures right now, though, are pretty mild, generally in the mid-70s, close to 80 in a few spots. Even near Lake Michigan, uh, temperatures are mild. By tomorrow morning, we'll be in the mid-50s. Look for skies to be sunny tomorrow, and it'll be a very warm day with a high temperature of 85. Looks like the threat for thunderstorms will hold off until tomorrow night. That's your News for Now First Alert forecast. Gary, thank you. People who live in the city of Lodi have been asking us to dig for information about the former primary school building in their city and what happened to $500,000 
set aside to demolish it. The school board treasurer tells us that money is being put back into the school to build labs, a greenhouse, and add to the athletic field. As far as the former primary school building, it was sold for $1,000 to a Madison property owner who declined an interview but said he wants to turn it into some sort of multi-use space. Lodi Alders have denied his request to rezone that property numerous times now. The people who live nearby say they don't want to see the building just sit there. They're hopeful they can figure out a plan soon. We want something that's going to bring value. We don't want a warehouse. We don't want a pawn store. We don't want just like an empty building, vacant building for years to come waiting for a developer to put in whatever they have. Now, until the property owner and common council can come to an agreement on what the space is to be used for, it will remain as is. City of Madison Fleet Vehicles will be getting a new home next fall. City leaders broke ground at the construction site of the future Fleet Services building located on Madison's east side. The 105,000 square foot building will be the place for the repair and storage of Madison's fleet cars, emergency vehicles and fire trucks. City leaders expect the new fleet services building to be done by the fall of 2020. New data shows Wisconsin teens and adults 15 to 34 are most likely to visit the emergency room for heat related illnesses. Public health officials say that finding is a bit surprising as the majority of heat safety notices focus on people who are either very, very young or very old. The Department of Health Services says it plans to remind more teens and people of working age about staying in air conditioning on those very hot days and drinking plenty of water. As you head outside this summer, state parks officials want to warn you that ticks are everywhere in Wisconsin. In 2017, Wisconsin was the fourth worst state in the nation for numbers of Lyme disease cases. Rose Schmidt explains how a new package of bills at the state capitol aims to spread awareness. Yes, well, state lawmakers aren't trying to discourage you from going outside this summer. On the contrary, hiking, boating, and hitting the trails are things they're hoping you take advantage of. But there's a new push to educate you about ticks and the tick-borne illnesses you could encounter. When we talk about the outdoors, this is it. Sitting on my deck, free of ticks. The tiny little insects have changed Alicia Cashman's life immeasurably. I no longer go into the woods. I no longer visit those places. That leaves her wanting to educate others about the lasting effects of Lyme disease, something she understands all too well. People often think that the wood tick, for instance, is, is a safe tick, and I always tell people there's no such thing as a safe tick. Ticks are something that uh, can survive all those, those uh, harsh weather uh, times. So. The issue is also top of mind for state representative Jeff Mursaw, who's part of a group of lawmakers putting together a package of bills aiming to spread awareness about Lyme disease. As I know there's a lot of other diseases that uh, we take very seriously and I think this is something that may have kind of been uh, left on the back burner. But no more, Mursaw says. The bipartisan proposals would require state parks to post signs and offer brochures informing visitors about how to check for ticks and prevent tick bites. A dozen states have got out in front of it and did uh, legislation and started doing things, and Wisconsin has fallen behind in that respect. Another bill would require all state parks and forests to sell bug spray with DEET, something only some of them currently do. Advocates acknowledge this bill package is not a cure-all solution. Yeah, I think that there needs to be more awareness for sure. But Alicia says it's a start in helping curb this complex problem, which she's dedicated her own life to doing. Um, I spray my yard and I go outside wearing light colored clothing, pants tucked in my socks, you know, looking like a geek, but um, I don't wanna go through this again. Another proposal requires a position in the state's health department be dedicated to raising awareness about diseases spread by ticks and mosquitoes. And the final bill would create a tick disease study committee. But Alicia says she does have concerns about that proposal that she's hoping she can work out with state lawmakers. All right, Rose, thank you. Well, teachers and students at a Fitchburg Elementary School spent the day watching the Scripps National Spelling Bee live stream and cheering on their classmate. It's very fun. It's very exciting. Um, she has put in so much um, time and effort. Um, the kids have always joked, you know, does she actually have to take her weekly spelling tests? And she still has taken her class tests also, but um, she's been putting in a lot of her outside work on her spelling and her words, too. Fifth grader Maya Jodhav was one of eight Wisconsin students to make it to the national competition, but the only one to advance to the top 50. At 10 years old, she was the youngest to make it to the final round today. She misspelled praseodymium, which is a yellowish white metallic element. Maya also competed last year and tied for 42nd place. 
High schoolers in Janesville are taking time to thank their former teachers for setting them up for success. We'll share their message now. They are encouraging younger students to make it to graduation day. Stay with us. Hundreds of Rock County high schoolers are taking one last trip before graduation. And for many of them, it was an emotional experience. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with why a trip down memory lane meant so much to these students. Adam? Well, Eric and Charlotte, today a very special day for hundreds of Craig graduates, and their teachers say it's special for them too. Before Craig seniors can walk at graduation, they're walking somewhere else, a place <laughs> where they're already legends. It's kind of crazy. And where it all began. This is like my favorite day of the year. Dozens of Craig students coming back to Roosevelt Elementary today to take one last trip down memory lane. All the memories just came flooding in right as I saw everything. It was, it was really cool. And to say thanks to the teachers who believed in them from day one. I see that these students come back and that had been in my class, in my program, and I'm feeling really proud. Today, the Roosevelt alums joked about Jim. Gonna spike on one of the teachers. <laughs> walked the familiar halls and even saw their legacy. No, this one was mine. Still carrying on. There's still like the um, blanket or quilt upstairs that we got to be a part of. That was For some students, it was one last time to reminisce. All the field trips and the recess and the great teachers, it was amazing. For others, a chance to look forward haven't really thought that oh I'm graduating it kind of just hit me today that I'm not gonna be here like anymore I'm going off on my own journey and while these students are now ready to walk across the stage the teachers they had won't forget the steps they took to get there that they want to come back and see the teachers and the classrooms where they had gone to school and say hi to us that means the world to all of us elementary teachers it's like saying our hard work paid off Teachers say one additional benefit of today's event is that the elementary school students get to see the big kids doing their thing. One teacher I talked to say it's teaching them to set their goals high. Right. Great example. Adam Duxter in Rock County. Adam, thank you. Thank you. A father in the Delavan area is demanding change after his son took his own life. It's a story you'll only see on News 3 Now. We'll share how telling his son's story and reaching out to other parents is helping him heal. And it's looking like a warm end to the work week. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has your first alert forecast coming up.
More kids and teens than ever are going to emergency rooms after thinking about or attempting suicide. And the rate of youth suicides has gone up dramatically in the last 10 to 15 years. One dad in the Delavan area wants to do something about the stigma he says still exists when it comes to mental health struggles and treatment. Jeff Fuller says his son Cole was a smart, athletic kid who loved the family business of training hunting dogs. He started to struggle over the past few years, but Jeff never thought Cole would take his own life. I've been warned by many not to take too much on, but no family wants to live with this. Tonight at 10, we'll tell you more about Cole and the lengths his dad is going to to make sure parents are talking to their kids. A Milwaukee man is using his appearance on American Ninja Warrior and social media to try to find his younger sister. On last night's show, David Alvarez said he is competing in hopes that his sister will see him. Alvarez says they were separated in the foster care system when he was just 13 years old. She was just two. He wore a T-shirt with her name, Walissa, and asks anyone who has information to contact him through Instagram. Oh, that's great. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now with a look at your forecast. Pretty nice day today. We had we started out with some cloud cover, but eventually the sun came out. Now we're watching a couple of showers and thunderstorms, mainly over southwestern Wisconsin. You see those little flashes of lightning popping up from time to time, mainly over about the southwestern, oh, say 90% of our view, viewing area. But the showers and storms will actually be heading farther to the south into uh, parts of Iowa uh, and moving out of our viewing area before too long. Now, some of those thunderstorms could bring some brief heavy downpours. We'll also see a chance for some showers and thunderstorms from tomorrow night into uh, Saturday and that could bring an additional say half inch to an inch of rain in some spots but it'll be a little more spotty and then uh, some more rain toward the middle of next week could bring in a little additional rainfall. This is the total rainfall from the computer model forecast through the end of next week. So that's good news. We're not seeing those big high numbers that we were earlier. Live view from the uh, Queen Bee Radio Skycam in Platteville, seeing some sunshine there. The clouds are starting to thin out on the WISC Skycam, but this is looking out toward the southwest. You can see those little buildup of clouds where a few of those showers and thunderstorms have been occurring. High temperature today, 76 degrees, the low 61, an above normal day temperature-wise. I haven't seen many of those this month. We're Still at 76, mostly sunny or partly sunny skies. Winds now out of the south southwest at five miles per hour. Low temperatures this morning cooled off into the 40s up in northern Wisconsin, but generally in the 50s to around 60 here in the southern part of the state. And that gave us a good head start on getting these mild temperatures that are in the mid 70s to around 80 across the state. But farther to the west, temperatures are in the 80s over much of Minnesota, even a few 90s over parts of the Dakotas. We'll probably be in the mid 80s tomorrow afternoon. Even though the upper level winds have shifted to the north, that's just drying out the air and sending the shower and thunderstorm chances farther to the south. That's why these storms in southwestern Wisconsin are drifting into to Illinois and Iowa and moving away from us. But out to the west, another weather system starting to take shape in the western part of the country. That looks like it'll take a more southerly track. And with the main part of the jet stream staying farther to the south, that'll keep us away from the main storm track. A couple of little areas of low pressure still in the eastern portion of the Midwest moving away, but the wind circulation around it, again, driving these showers and thunderstorms to the south. Up to the north, there's another cold front just north of the U.S.-Canadian border that'll drop in here late tomorrow night and Saturday, giving us a chance for a shower or thunderstorm. But ahead of it, those temperatures have warmed well into the 80s across the Dakotas, into Minnesota and North Dakota. Dew point temperatures are not very high, though. Notice they're in the 40s, so the air dry. It'll cool off at night, but warm up very nicely during the day. So tomorrow, that's why we're looking for high temperatures in the middle 80s. Forecast for tonight. Outside chance of a shower or thunderstorm mainly over southwestern Wisconsin this evening, otherwise partly cloudy with a low of 54. Tomorrow, a mostly sunny day with a very warm uh, high temperatures in the mid 80s, but the humidity levels won't be very high, so it'll feel comfortable. On uh, future track, the shower and thunderstorm chances move out tonight. Look for low temperatures in the middle 50s. Plenty of sunshine for tomorrow on those high temperatures well into the 80s. Tomorrow night, as that cold front draws closer, you can see a few showers and thunderstorms popping up, and they'll continue into the day on Saturday. The winds will shift around to the north, and on Saturday, high temperatures will drop back to around 70 degrees. Rainfall amounts will be spotty. A few places could pick up over a quarter of an inch. Other places nearby might not pick up anything at all. Otherwise, the 7 to 10 day forecast keeps temperatures very comfortable, mainly in the 70s. A chance of rain in the middle of next week, but just a chance the rest of the time dry weather is expected. The state high school tournament season is in full gear and we'll go to Nielsen to see one of the up and coming freshmen in boys tennis. The story is coming up in sports.
As we hit the end of May, the state high school tournament season is in full swing. It's sectional final day for softball, so the winners go to state and Goodman Diamond next week. Tomorrow, the 124th WIA State Track and Field Meet begins in lacrosse. And the boys state individual tennis tournament is underway at Nielsen Tennis Stadium. One player to watch probably for years to come is Wanakee freshman Tyler Nelson. He wins his opening match against an opponent from Ashwaubenon in straight sets. Nelson is now 24-2 and two this season. And Madison LaFollette's Tiger Yang is a sophomore. He gets his tournament off to a good start with a straight set win over Richard Balistrieri of Marquette University School. Yang and Nelson are playing each each other right now in the second round and they just went to a third set. Badger football has announced the start times for a few games in the 2019 season including the season opener in Tampa against South Florida. That's going to be on Friday August 30th. It'll be a 6 p.m. Central kick on ESPN. The home opener against Central Michigan is a 2.30 start on BTN. The big Michigan game at Camp Randall on September 21st is an 11 a.m. start on Fox. October 12th is either going to be 2.30 or 3 p.m. against Michigan State. And the October 19th game at Illinois is an 11 a.m. kickoff. The NBA Finals begin tonight. Golden State at Toronto. The Raptors actually have the home court advantage because they have the second best record in the NBA, just two games behind the Bucks. The Warriors are going for their third straight title and are in the finals for the fifth straight year. Game one tips just after eight in Toronto. The Packers have another organized team activity in Green Bay tomorrow. Then they'll take a break, then return for another OTA next week. Now, we've talked a lot about how the new offense under Matt LaFleur will affect quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Well, it affects everyone on offense, including star receiver Devontae Adams, who caught 13 touchdown passes last season. Adams, like everyone else, says it's a steep learning curve to pick up the new world order on the Packers' offense. I mean, it's complex. It's, it's a lot to it, but um, there's nothing we can't handle. It's, it's really early still, so we're still getting a good feel for, you know, how, how, how we run in certain routes to quarterbacks on certain timing, but that's what this time is for, to, to, to practice and, and get better and get on the same page. Tiger Woods is playing this week for the first time since he missed the cut at the PGA Championship a couple of weeks ago at the first round of the Memorial Tournament. Woods shot two under par. He's five shots behind the leader, Ryan Moore. Steve Stricker's playing the Memorial this week. Stricker's first round, three under 69, so Stricker's in 12th place. The Brewers are already leading their game in Pittsburgh. Mike Moustakas has a two-run first-inning homer, 2 nothing Brewers. Chase Anderson is the Brewers' starting pitcher tonight against the Pirates' Joe Musgrove. The Cubs are off tonight. And here's a foul ball at the Oakland A's game. Watch the guy in the white hat and the blue T-shirt. Didn't get it. He actually knocked the ball ahead when he got to it. And that lady picked it up there. Despondent. Our guy just nope. texted someone oh to pass on his dismay because he didn't get the ball. Gary, well, you've been to a gajillion Cubs games. How many <laughs> balls do you have? Just a couple, actually. Yeah. I, I just have you ever put that much effort into it? Oh, no. I mean, well, of course, the seats aren't that empty at Wrigley Field usually. Not that's anymore. That's true. Yeah. Okay. It's he's seat surfing at this point. I'd like to see you stretch it out. I bet you we can sell tickets I'd be in for track, that. I'd be in traction <laughs> after that. So, we're watching a couple of thunderstorms over southwestern Wisconsin. There's live view from the Queen Bee Radio SkyCam in Platteville. You can see the thunderstorms building up there, uh, mainly along and south of Highway 18. So it's mainly just southern Grant County. Uh, western portion of Lafayette County and southwestern Dodge County or uh, Iowa County they'll be seeing the storms over the next couple hours. Gary thanks thanks for joining us at 6. We'll see you back here at 10.